Marley is dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. Dead as a doornail. Shame. I always liked Marley. He was a sensible man. A good man of business. Not one of these fools like my nephew running around talking about love and compassion, wishing people a Merry Christmas and collecting money for charity. Merry Christmas. Bah! Humbug! for charity. Why should I care about the poor? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Why should I care about the surplus population? They are no business of mine. My clerk, of course, is asking for the entire day off for Christmas. A day's wages for no work. Theft, that's what that is. But I suppose he must have the whole day. Bah! Humbug! A, a ghost? What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. You don't believe in me? No, I don't. Why not? I don't believe in ghosts. You must be some kind of hallucination. Ah! Okay, okay, I believe! I believe, but what are you doing here? See the chains I wear? I am condemned to wander the earth, bound in the chains I forged during my lifetime, witnessing the suffering of my fellow human beings, people I should have helped when I was alive. Scrooge, I must warn you, the chains you are making for yourself are even heavier than mine. But but you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were my business. Or do you think the only business a person has is how they make money? My time is nearly gone, but I have come here for a reason. You still have a chance to escape my fate. You were always a good friend to me. You will be haunted by three spirits. That's the chance you were talking about? It is. Okay, no thank you then. It is your only hope, my old friend. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past. Spirit, would you put on your cap? Would you so soon put out my light? Isn't it enough that you are one of the ones who helped to make this cap? Part of the reason that my light has been stifled over the years? I'm sorry, I did not mean to offend you. What is it you want with me? Your welfare. Hmm. Oh, Scrooge. I'm here to help you, if you'll let me. Come, walk with me. Good heavens! This is where I grew up. The school is not entirely deserted, is it? One child remains behind. Poor boy. I wish. But it's too late now. Too late for what? Never mind. My little sister. She was always a frail girl, wasn't she? But she had a good heart. She did. She died a woman and had, as I think, children. One child. Your nephew. Do you know this place? Know it? I was an apprentice here. I worked for old Mr. Fuzzywig. 
Oh, he used to throw the best Christmas parties. A small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Well, it's not as though he spent a lot of money, is it? It's not about how much money he spent. It was a pleasure to work for Fuzzywig. The way that he treated his apprentices, the kindness that he showed us, that was worth a great deal. Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. No, there is something, isn't there? It's just, I'd like to say something to my clerk, that's all. Oh, who's that? My ex-fiance. It didn't work out. As if pursuit of wealth could have changed how I felt. But I suppose it was a long engagement and we both changed a great deal. Or at least you did. Take me away from here, spirit. Show me no more. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me! You've never seen the like of me before. Never. Or the rest of my family? My siblings? You have many? Oh yes, over 2,000. A very large family. Spirit, I know you're here to help me, so let's get started. Show me whatever it is you're going to show me. Open to the poor on Sundays so that they might cook their food if they don't have an oven at home. Spirit, why do you seek to put a stop to that? I? I seek? Am I wrong? It's done in your name, isn't it? The ghost of Christmas present. Christmas is a religious holiday, is it not? And in the name of that religion, the bakeries must be closed on Sunday no matter what their purpose for being open is. Never mind if it hurts the poor. Listen carefully, Scrooge. There are those who claim to know us, but who are as strange to us as if they had never lived. Charge their doings to them, not us. Where are we now? It's the home of your poor clerk, Bob Cratchit. Look, poor though they might be, he and his family understand the spirit of Christmas far better than you. Look how they gather around together. Listen to the children exclaiming over the goose that they're going to have for dinner. Oh, what's that? See how Bob Cratchit is so disappointed when he thinks that his daughter Martha might not be coming? And look how relieved he is to find her there. As long as they are together, as a family, they are happy. Has the wealth you've spent your life hoarding up brought you so much joy? What about the child, Tiny Tim? God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Oh no, kind spirit, please say he will be spared. Weren't you talking just the other day about the so-called surplus population? Not so cold-hearted now that you can put a name and a face to it, are you? My nephew. This must be his Christmas party. Bah, humbug. That's what he said. He believed it, too. They're talking about me, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yes. But your nephew's not upset with you, Scrooge. Listen. He pities you. His wealth is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. What is it they're saying now? That by disliking them, I've only lost myself a very good dinner? Ha! Huh, that shows what they know. Are you really sure you wouldn't rather be with them, enjoying their company, than shut up in your counting house all alone? Bah! Humbug! I'm growing weak. My time in this world is almost done. 
our spirit's life so short? If it ends at midnight, the time is drawing near. Pardon me, but what is that beneath the hem of your robe? Is it a claw or a foot? It might be a claw for all the flesh there is upon it. Look, look here. Are they yours? They are man's, ignorance and want. You wear them both, but especially ignorance. Isn't there something that can be done? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? <laughs> presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? You're going to show me things that haven't happened yet, but that will happen. Am I right? You frighten me more than any spirit that I've seen, but I know that your purpose is to do me good. So I'm willing to go with you. Won't you speak to me? It's likely to be a very cheap funeral. I can't think of anyone who would want to go. I don't understand, spirit. What does this have to do with me? What do they think they're doing stealing from a dead man? If he wanted to keep him after he was dead, why was he so cold and heartless in his life? He could have had someone to look after him in his last days, but no, he frightened everyone away while he was alive, and now we profit from it. I understand, spirit. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way right now. No, no, I can't look. I understand, but I can't. Please let me leave this place. I swear I won't leave its lessons behind. Please, spirit, if there's anyone who feels anything for this man's death, show me that person. There is hope yet. Only if he relents. He is past relenting. He is dead. To whom will our debts be transferred? I don't know, but by then we'll have the money. And in any case, whoever it is can't possibly be worse. Are you seriously telling me the only emotion anyone feels is joy? Relief? Please, let me see some tenderness connected with death or this chamber will forever haunt me. Tiny Tim? So the child will die. No, no, I don't want to see this. You're about to leave me, aren't you? No, wait, wait. Before you go, who was the man who lay upon the bed? Before I draw nearer, tell me one thing. Are you showing me what will happen? Or what might happen? Our actions have consequences, yes, but if we make different choices, then the outcomes will change. Is that not the case? Was it me? But, but I'm not who I was. I can still make different choices. I can still change things, right? Why show me all this if I can't change it? <gasps> I'm still alive. Oh, goodness. I don't know what to do. I feel as light as a feather. <laughs> I feel like a child again. 
Oh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone! I don't know what day it is. Hello? What day is it? Christmas Day. <gasps> Christmas Day! I haven't missed it! Oh, I know what I shall do. I shall buy the turkey in the poultry shop, the big one, and send it to the Cratchits. They won't have a clue who sent it. <laughs> and then, oh, I've got to find those gentlemen who stopped by the other day collecting for charity. I owe them a rather lot of money, I think. And <laughs> yes, I must go to my nephew's Christmas dinner. And of course, I'll have to give Bob Cratchit a raise. I haven't done that in far too long. And I'll do whatever I can to help Tiny Tim get well. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. The strangest thing has happened with my husband's boss, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. See, Scrooge has always been the worst sort of boss that you could ever imagine. Cold, greedy, hard-hearted. Grumbled and groaned about giving my husband the day off for Christmas, and it's not as if he works in a hospital or something where you just can't shut down for the day. Never gave a raise or a bonus, never said a single kind word. Miserable sort of person. But then the other day, my husband Bob comes home looking like he's seen a ghost or something, and he tells me the most amazing tale. Apparently, Scrooge showed up for work that day like he was somebody else entirely. Gave my husband a raise? Wished him a Merry Christmas? That might seem pretty ordinary and unexceptional, but if you think that, you don't know Scrooge. And that's not the half of it. We've been so worried about our son, Tiny Tim, who, as I'm sure you probably remember, has not been well recently. And of course, there's nothing that we wouldn't do to take care of him, but there's a lot we can't afford. Anyway, I don't know if Bob said something to Scrooge or what, but apparently he wants to pay for our son's medical bills. It's strange, but I can't help feeling like something happened this Christmas. A couple days before, Scrooge was his old self, the most cold and mean-spirited man you've ever met. And now, he's just completely changed. I don't know if it's a dream or a delusion or a genuine Christmas miracle. For Tiny Tim's sake, I hope it's a miracle, but I'll believe that when I see it.